Fans, film critics, scholars, and industry organizations widely regard 1972's The Godfather as one of the greatest films ever made. This consensus was solidified by the film's impressive 11 Oscar nominations and wins in categories such as Best Picture, Best Actor for Marlon Brando, and Best Adapted Screenplay for Francis Ford Coppola and Mario Puzo. While Coppola's brilliant direction provided a robust foundation for the Godfather trilogy, Complemented by compelling scripts about a New York crime family striving to transition into legitimacy, there is no denying the crucial role played by the distinguished cast of the expansive saga in establishing these films as enduring classics. But for nearly 50 years, we've sadly lost some of these amazing actors. Whether they had big or small ones, each left an indelible mark. In this video, let's take a moment to remember The Godfather, Actors you might not have known passed away, acknowledging their lasting impact on a classic that still resonates today. Marlon Brando as Don Vito Corleone. While the passing of Marlon Brando in 2004 is common knowledge for fans of the Godfather trilogy, it would be remiss not to acknowledge one of the greatest actors of all time in a list of late Godfather performers. Brando's portrayal of Don Vito Corleone is intriguing, considering his iconic status as an Oscar-nominated actor during a period of Hollywood decline. Director Francis Ford Coppola had to battle to secure Brando's casting, given the actor's recent string of box office failures. Paramount Pictures, under strict conditions, eventually agreed to the casting, including an unprecedented screen test for the esteemed actor, at 47, Brando's remarkable transformation into the much older Don Vito did not go unnoticed by fans, critics, and the film industry. It earned him his second Best Actor Oscar and revitalized his career. Brando went on to deliver other acclaimed performances, such as portraying Kal-El's father, Jor-El, in director Richard Donner's Superman, and the eccentric Colonel Kurtz in Coppola's Vietnam War classic. Apocalypse Now. Despite famously rejecting his Best Actor Oscar for The Godfather to protest the treatment of Native Americans, the Motion Picture Academy honored him once more with a Best Supporting Actor nomination for the 1989 anti-apartheid drama A Dry White Season. Notable roles continued, including the 2004 comedy drama Don Juan de Marco and the troubled 1996 remake of the Island of Dr. Moreau. Brando's final appearance in a feature film was alongside Robert De Niro and Edward Norton in the 2001 heist thriller, The Score. The legendary actor passed away three years later on July 1, 2004, at the age of 80, succumbing to pulmonary fibrosis, leaving behind one of the greatest legacies in film history. John Cazal as Fredo Corleone, Primarily a stage actor throughout most of his adult life, John Cazal's film career took off in 1972 when Francis Ford Coppola cast him as Fredo Corleone, the ill-fated middle son of the Corleone family. While Cazal was best known for his heart-wrenching portrayal of the docile Fredo, tragically assassinated on the order of his younger brother Michael, after betraying the family in The Godfather Part II, he also made a significant impact in the three other films he starred in before his untimely death in the late 1970s. What makes Cazal's filmography intriguing, aside from The Godfather and its first sequel, is the substantial connection each of the three projects had to the The Godfather films. Cazalet's film between the Oscar-winning mob classics, 1974's The Conversation, was also directed by Coppola, while the 1975 crime drama Dog Day Afternoon reunited Cazal with Pacino. In his final screen role in 1978's Best Picture Oscar winner The Deer Hunter, Cazal starred opposite Robert De Niro, who portrayed the young Vito Corleone in The Godfather Part II. Regrettably, Cazal's 11-year battle with lung cancer came to an end on March 13, 1978, with his then-girlfriend, Deer Hunter co-star Meryl Streep, by his side. 
Aware of his terminal illness during production, director Michael Cimino reportedly rearranged the shooting order of the film so Kazal could complete his scenes. Unfortunately, Kazal never had the opportunity to celebrate the release of The Deer Hunter, which premiered in Los Angeles in December 1978, nine months after his death at the age of 42. Richard Bright as Neri In contrast to many characters who portrayed the muscle protecting the family in The Godfather Trilogy, Richard Bright endured it all as Al Neri, a long-serving Corleone family bodyguard. Bright's career, primarily consisting of guest spots from 1957 to 1971, took a significant turn in 1972 when he secured the role of Neri in The Godfather. Aside from reprising Neri in 1974's The Godfather Part II and 1990's The Godfather Part III, the resolute actor shifted between villain and hero roles in films such as Once Upon a Time in America and Red Heat. He played a gangster in 1984's Once Upon a Time in America, in The Sopranos, and even on the soap opera One Life to Live, in which he had a recurring role as the mob boss Moose Mulligan. He also made appearances in television series like Oz, The Sopranos, Law and & Order, and Law and & Order, Criminal Intent. Bright met a tragic end at the age of 65 on February 18, 2006, when he was struck and killed by a bus in New York's Upper West Side. Fourteen years after his passing, Bright's contribution to the Godfather saga was commemorated once more with Francis Ford Coppola's re-edit of the third Godfather film, titled The Godfather, Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone. The third installment features more of Al Neri than any other Godfather film, as Neri ascended in the ranks to become one of Michael Corleone and Connie Corleone Rizzi's closest confidants, Lenny Montana as Luca Brasi. Similar to John Marley's Jack Waltz, Lenny Montana's Luca Brasi has a brief yet impactful appearance in the first Godfather, providing several iconic moments. Luca Brasi, Don Vito Corleone's deadliest assassin, is first seen rehearsing his speech and presenting a gift to the Don's daughter Connie on her wedding day. Later, he meets a gruesome end, stabbed and garroted on the orders of Corleone's adversary, Virgil Solozzo, Al Lettieri. Following Brasi's murder, Solozzo delivers the chilling message that the fearsome henchman sleeps with the fishes. The Godfather marked Montana's first credited film role. Born Lenny Passaforo, he had a career as a professional wrestler, adopting the name Lenny the Bull Montana in the 1950s and 60s. Retaining the Montana moniker for his film career, the six-foot, six-inch actor's powerful physique not only helped him secure his role in The Godfather, but also in other films requiring a formidable presence, such as Steve Martin's The Jerk and Jackie Chan's Battle Creek Brawl. Montana passed away at the age of 66, due to a heart attack on May 12, 1992. Ab Vigoda as Sal Tessio. Image was everything in Hollywood, and Ab Vigoda's unusual look became his ticket to fame and fortune. The door-faced character actor was best known for playing gritty mafioso types, most notably as the scamming Tessio in The Godfather and The Godfather Part E.I., but he was more than just a tough guy. He was also a gifted comedic actor. Audiences remembered him as the aging cynical detective Sergeant Phil Fish on the hit sitcom Barney Miller, a role that earned Vigoda Emmy nominations for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series for three years in a row between 1976 and 1978. Tessio delivered an iconic line during a meeting with Michael Corleone, Sonny Corleone, and Tom Hagen, presenting a bulletproof vest wrapped in brown paper containing a fish. The line, It's a Sicilian message. It means Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes, conveyed a deadly message following Brasi's encounter with rivals Virgil Solozzo and Bruno Tattaglia. Tessio eventually betrayed the family, leading to a fate similar to Brasi's. In a poignant moment, he asks Tom Hagen for help, saying, Tom, can you get me off the hook, for old times' sake? 
Vigoda had a prolific career with nearly 100 roles, including early television appearances on series like Dark Shadows and later guest spots on The Love Boat, Fantasy Island, Mad About You, Law and & Order, and MacGyver. His film credits include Cannonball Run 2, Joe V's The Volcano, and Good Burger. Despite enduring rumors of his death for decades, A.B. Vigoda passed away from natural causes on January 26, 2016, at the age of 94. Alex Rocco as Mo Green Arguably, no death in the Godfather series is more agonizing to witness than that of Alex Rocco's Mo Green, the volatile Las Vegas casino owner who mistreats Fredo Corleone. Green's harsh treatment of his older brother deeply affects Michael, compounded by Green's refusal to sell his casinos to the Corleone family. In one of the most memorable assassinations in the trilogy, Mo is shot through the eye while receiving a massage during the climactic bloodbath in the film's third act. Green's demise holds significance as it is suggested that Hyman Roth in The Godfather Part II is motivated by the death of his childhood friend and business partner to seek revenge against Michael. With fewer than a dozen film and TV roles to his name, Rocco's career soared after his menacing portrayal of Green. Unlike his career pre-The Godfather, the actor's work alternated between film and television, but at a much busier pace. On television, Rocco made guest appearances on series like Police Story, The Rockford Files, Beretta, and Starsky and & Hutch, as well as lighter shows such as The Love Boat, Mary Tyler Moore, The Facts of Life, in a recurring role, and The George Carlin Show, as a regular. In film, Rocco appeared in features like Cannonball Run 2, a seemingly popular choice for Godfather alumni for some reason, The Wedding Planner, and as the lively record executive Sol Silaire in Tom Hanks' directorial debut, That Thing You Do. Rocco passed away from pancreatic cancer on July 18, 2015, at the age of 79. Al Lettieri as Solozzo. Virgil Solozzo existed on borrowed time in The Godfather, and the impending doom is heightened by the formidable presence of Al Lettieri, the actor who brought a menacing aura to Solozzo. Solozzo, a heroin kingpin, signified a significant shift in New York City's criminal underworld as Don Vito Corleone advised the five crime families to reject involvement in the drug trade. Tensions escalated when Solozzo played a role in the murder of Vito's bodyguard Luca Brasi and attempted, albeit unsuccessfully, to assassinate the Don, prompting Michael to commit his first murder for the family. Before The Godfather, Lettieri's career primarily consisted of television appearances, ranging from guest roles on classics like The Adventures of Rin Tin Tin and Gunsmoke, to uncredited work in The Untouchables and Rawhide. Similar to many of his fellow Godfather actors, Lettieri's film opportunities expanded significantly after gaining exposure in the iconic film. He secured roles in features such as The Getaway with Steve McQueen, McHugh opposite John Wayne, and Mr. Majestic, starring Charles Bronson. Unfortunately, Lettieri's career was tragically cut short when he passed away from a heart attack on October 18, 1975, at the age of 47. Lee Strasberg as Hyman Roth Lee Strasberg's portrayal of Hyman Roth, the Corleone family investor and business partner who ultimately betrays Michael Corleone, was a departure from his more predominant role as a drama coach. Strasberg, known for founding the Actors Studio in 1951, made a rare appearance on screen, particularly in major films. Before his role as Roth in The Godfather Part II, 1974, his only other film credit was in the war drama China Venture in 1953. Strasberg's nomination for an Oscar in the Best Supporting Actor category for his role in The Godfather Part II was a fitting acknowledgement of his contribution to the film. He competed against his fellow Godfather Part II actors, Michael V. Gatso and Robert De Niro, with De Niro ultimately winning the award. 
Notably, De Niro had been one of Strasberg's famous students. Following The Godfather Part II, Strasberg made a few more film appearances, including in the legal drama And Justice for All, opposite Al Pacino, and the crime comedy Going in Style, alongside George Burns and Art Carney. Despite his ventures in film, Strasberg's true passion remained in coaching students at the Actors Studio. He continued in this role until his death from a heart attack on February 17, 1982, at the age of 80. G.D. Spradlin as Senator and Pat Geary. Even a formidable U.S. politician proved powerless against Don Michael Corleone in The Godfather Part II as G.D. Spradlin's character, Senator Pat Geary, painfully discovered. Spradlin flawlessly embodied the corrupt politician in the film, attempting to extort a substantial sum of money from Michael, including monthly personal payouts, while the Corleone family sought to expand its Las Vegas hotel operation. Pressing Michael and the family further with U.S. Senate hearings, Geary eventually found himself in a compromising position with a deceased prostitute, a clear signal that the Corleones were the only ones capable of making irresistible offers. In real life, a lawyer-turned-oil producer, Spradlin discovered his true calling in acting. He embarked on his acting career with a series of guest appearances on television series like Gomer Pyle, USMC, I Spy, Dragnet 1967, and Bonanza. His portrayal of the slimy politician in The Godfather Part II opened doors to more film opportunities, and Spradlin appeared in features such as North Dallas 40, Apocalypse Now, reuniting with Godfather director Francis Ford Coppola, The Long Kiss Goodnight, and Ed Wood. Spradlin's final role came in 1999 when he portrayed the legendary Washington Post executive editor Ben Bradley in the political comedy spoof Dick. He passed away from natural causes at the age of 90 on July 24, 2011. Al Martino as Johnny Fontaine. Singer-turned-actor Al Martino portrayed Johnny Fontaine, the smooth-voiced crooner seeking his breakthrough in the film industry in the initial installment of The Godfather. In a memorable early scene while making his case to Vito Corleone, Marlon Brando, the tearful Fontaine is slapped by the angered Don, who admonishes him, saying, You can act like a man. What's the matter with you? He was also the first American performer to score a number one hit on the British charts, an achievement which landed him in the record books, thanks to its popularity with record buyers. The influence of criminal elements took him out of the business at a crucial point, but his unflagging determination brought him back to the limelight in the 1960s, culminating with his signature hit, Spanish Eyes, in 1965. In 1972, he received an unlikely career boost with his turn as a failed Sinatra-esque singer in The Godfather and its subsequent sequels. In real life, Martino primarily adhered to his successful career as a singer, achieving Billboard Top 10 hits such as Here in My Heart, I Love You Because, and I Love You More Every Day. His songs also appeared on movie soundtracks, beginning with the title, track of the Betty Davis and Olivia de Havilland thriller, Hush, Hush, Sweet Charlotte. Naturally, Martino's songs were featured on the soundtracks of The Godfather and The Godfather Part Three, where he reprised the role of Fontaine. Martino was 82 when he passed away from a heart attack in Pennsylvania on October 13, 2009. John Marley as Jack Waltz. While some actors only had brief appearances in the Godfather trilogy, their characters have become unforgettable in the minds of movie fans. One of the most memorable supporting players was John Marley, who portrayed the defiant studio executive Jack Waltz in the first film. Waltz featured in two significant scenes, where Vito Corleone's conciliere and adopted son, Tom Hagen, Robert Duvall, was dispatched from New York to Hollywood with an offer the studio head couldn't refuse, cast Johnny Fontaine in his new film, or face consequences. 
Volts vehemently rejected Hagen's offer, only to wake up the next morning with the bloodied head of his prized stallion, Khartoum, at the foot of his bed. Not surprisingly, Fontaine landed the role, with Woltz's blood-curdling scream still echoing on the movie's soundtrack. Marley's intense performance is undoubtedly one of the reasons why the actor consistently found work in film and television throughout his 35-year career, amassing over 170 credits. In addition to The Godfather, Marley also appeared in memorable films such as Love Story, earning him a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nomination, and Cat Baloo. He had roles in various television series, including The Twilight Zone, The Alfred Hitchcock Hour, and The Incredible Hulk. Marley died after open-heart surgery on May 22, 1984, at age 76. Richard Castellano as Clemenza Richard Castellano, like many of his Godfather castmates, gained prominence in Hollywood due to his role in the first film. Castellano had around a dozen roles in film and television before being cast as one of the Corleone family's capo regimes, Peter Clemenza. He delivered the classic line, Leave the gun, take the cannoli, which he improvised, at least in part, while talking with hitman Rocco Lampone after the execution of Pauli Gatto for his role in the attempted assassination of Vito Corleone. Castellano, who appeared only in the first Godfather film, continued to work steadily afterward, primarily in television. His credits included the lead role in the sitcom The Super, where he played a building superintendent, another lead role as Joe Vitale in the sitcom Joe and Sons, and a crime-related role in the miniseries The Gangster Chronicles. Richard S. Castellano was initially supposed to reprise his role as Clemenza in The Godfather Part II. However, there was allegedly a dispute in which Castellano requested that his wife, Ardell Sheridan, who also appeared in The Godfather as Signora Clemenza, write his lines for the character. Coppola refused this request, and as a result, Clemenza's character was replaced by Frank Pentangeli, played by Michael V. Gazzo. Sheridan later disputed this account, stating that Castellano refused to return to the role due to the belief that Clemenza would never become a traitor, among other disputes. Tragically, Castellano passed away on December 10, 1988, after suffering a heart attack. He was 55. Bruno Kirby as young Clemenza. Bruno Kirby is primarily recognized for his comedic roles in movies like When Harry Met Sally, City Slickers, and This is Spinal Tap, where he notably appeared as an agitated limo driver. However, his early career involved a dramatic performance as the young Peter Clemenza in The Godfather Part II. The film, directed by Francis Ford Coppola and written by Mario Puzo, took a different approach delving into the past and present to depict the rise of young Vito Corleone, played by Robert De Niro, before he became a powerful figure in New York's criminal underworld. As Coppola needed actors to portray the younger versions of major characters from the first Godfather film, Bruno Kirby took on the role of Clemenza. Prior to his role in The Godfather Part II, Kirby had already established himself in the industry. Interestingly, his credits included the short-lived sitcom The Super, where he played one of the sons of Richard S. Castellano, who portrayed the older Peter Clemenza. Over a 35-year career, Kirby accumulated 70 screen credits, collaborating with notable figures such as Marlon Brando in The Freshman and Al Pacino in Donnie Brasco. He also made multiple appearances alongside Gary Shandling in It's Gary Shandling's Show and The Larry Sanders Show. So that is all for today. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay informed about our upcoming videos. We look forward to seeing you in the next one.